If you're a nonfiction or fiction author, or if you've ever dreamed of becoming a best-selling author, I want to share with you the key strategies, systems, and tools you need to be successful today in 2015. Hey there, it's Tom Corsonals, number one best-selling author of the Kindle Publishing Bible series and founder of TCK Publishing. I want to welcome you to eBook Publishing School 2.0. So if you've seen eBook Publishing School before, these videos are totally new and updated for 2015 with new training, new information, and new skills and strategies to help you become a number one best-selling author on Amazon. In this free video training course, I want to share with you as much as I possibly can about how you can format, publish, and professionally market your books on Amazon. Now, if you've never seen me before and haven't heard my story, I'm going to share that with you real quickly so you understand who I am, where I'm coming from, and how I can help you get your books published and become a number one best-selling author. I started writing my first book about nine years ago. And like a lot of authors, I had no idea what I was doing. It was an exciting journey. Uh, I wasn't really planning to get rich or you know hit it big. I just wanted to share my knowledge and my information and my story with the world. And uh, you know, I had a lot of encouragement from friends and family, and that encouragement urged me to go and try to find a traditional publisher and agent to get a book deal. If you've ever tried that whole query letter thing before, you probably know how that story turned out. You know, six years later, after trying and struggling to find an agent or publisher to work with me, uh, I was broke and I didn't have any book deal, right? And it was about that time, a little over three years ago, that a friend just offhanded and shared a comment with me that changed my life forever. And he said, hey, why don't you just go self-publish your book on Kindle? And I thought, hey, you know, that sounds cool, but I don't even know that's possible. And, you know, I wouldn't even know how to do that. Um, but the idea got me really excited. And so what I did is I spent every single day reading every blog post and reading every book I could find about how to self-publish a book. And there wasn't a whole lot of information out there back then about how to do it. Um, but I got to piece together all the pieces of information from here and there and finally figured it out. And about three weeks later, I had finished and published my first ebook on Amazon Kindle. And I'll be honest with you, uh, it was an exciting moment for me, but it wasn't really a big turning point in my life, or at least didn't feel like a big turning point in my life at the time because I was so embarrassed. You know, I was so embarrassed I couldn't get a traditional book deal. I was so embarrassed that, you know, I wasn't going to be a New York Times bestseller. So I, I didn't tell anyone that I had published my book. I didn't tell my friends, I didn't tell my family, um, you know, because I was embarrassed that I actually had to self-publish. Uh, because, you know, back then we, we had that stigma. And even today, a lot of people still have that stigma around self-publishing. We think that, oh, if you don't have a traditional book deal, you're not a real author or you're not really successful. Uh, but that's just not true at all anymore. And I'm going to show you that in this video training course. But what happened is I ch came back to my uh, ebook account about a month later and checked back in. I logged in. I checked my sales. And what I saw is that I had sold about 15 books in that first month. And I don't know about you, but for me, that was a thrill. I was jumping up and down out of my seat. I was so excited. I mean, I was absolutely amazed that I could sell 15 books in a month because... I had not done any promotion or marketing, right? I didn't tell anyone that I published my book. No friends, no family, no one knew that my book existed, yet somehow these people found it on Amazon and were purchasing it, purchasing it and buying it and leaving reviews for it. And that just got me super excited and super jazzed. And from there I decided, hey look, if I could sell 15 books in a month without doing any marketing or promotion, Imagine what I could do if I actually focused on this, if I actually treated it like a business, if I actually got up in the morning and focused on writing my books and building my author platform and marketing and sharing and getting my message out there to the world. And lo and behold, I did that. 12 months later, I had my first $10,000 plus month from ebook royalties on Amazon Kindle alone, right? It doesn't count paperbacks and audiobooks, but just from Kindle ebook royalties on Amazon. And that was a huge month for me, right? That was kind of the turning point where I realized, hey, that this is the real deal. This is the big deal. And it didn't happen overnight. I didn't do race overnight. Uh, but what happened was I had built up a loyal audience, a loyal following of customers, a loyal following of readers who loved my work, who loved what I was doing. And I'm going to share with you how to do that in this video training course, right? And you know, I can't share with you every single thing there is to know about being an author in you know, these four little videos, but I'm going to share with you as much as I possibly can. And for those of you who want to learn even more or take it to a higher level, I'll invite you to join me in Ultimate Author Academy, 
where we'll take all the knowledge you need and the skills you need to become a successful number one best-selling author on Amazon and help you take that to an even higher level. Okay, so here's how the training at ebook publishing school is gonna work. So in this video, video number one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to professionally format your ebook for Kindle. You don't need fancy software, you don't need expensive software, you don't need to hire someone for hundreds or even thousands of dollars to format your book. You can do it all yourself in less than a half an hour. Super easy, super simple if you follow along with the tutorial video I'm about to share with you. And it's super important that you learn how to do this because understanding the skill of how to format your ebook for Kindle can save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars for every book you publish, right? I've seen people spend thousands and thousands of dollars hiring someone to format their ebooks for them. And if you don't have a big budget, that's money you should probably be spending on other things like marketing, branding, getting a really good professional book cover, getting a really good professional editor to help you with your books. Anywhere you can save money and still get professional work done, that's just more money in your pocket and it's gonna help you reach more readers and get your message out there to a larger audience. And that's really one of the biggest mistakes new authors make is they don't get educated. They don't learn the skills. And what you do is, you know, you're talking to a friend and, you know, they say, hey, I've got this great person who helped you format your ebook for you. And, you know, because it was referred by your friend, you don't ask any questions and you just pay whatever they ask. And then you find out later on, hey, you just spent hundreds or thousands of dollars on something that you either got overcharged or something you could have just done yourself if you had taken the time, effort, and energy to learn how to do it. And then next, in video two, I'm gonna share with you how to actually publish and upload your ebook on Kindle. I'm gonna walk you through the entire publishing process on Kindle step by step. So all you have to do, just like this tutorial video, is just go to the website and follow along in the video and you'll learn every single step you need to take to get your ebook published and available for sale on amazon.com. Then in video number three, I'm gonna share with you the six key foundations of marketing success. These are the absolute principles of marketing success. And we can't really talk about strategies and what to do uh, if you don't understand the foundations, right? Because you know you can just follow blindly and someone says, go post on Facebook and go post on Twitter. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't understand the foundations of marketing success, if you don't understand the principles that actually attract new readers and new customers to your business, then what you're gonna do is you're basically just following the herd. And that's not a recipe for success. So I'm gonna start by teaching you the foundations of marketing success, the key principles that actually attract people to you without being pushy, without being salesy, without making all your friends and family hate you, but actually by connecting deeply with your ideal customers, with your ideal readers. Then in video number four, I'm gonna show you some totally free, amazing marketing strategies won't cost you a dime, but can help you sell hundreds, even thousands of books in a single day for free, right? These are cutting edge ebook promotion strategies that no one else out there is really teaching. And I'm gonna show you how to do all that in video number four. So what we're really doing here at ebook publishing school is we're teaching you the skills, the key principles of success, right? If you wanna be successful, whether it's as an author, as a parent, as a husband or a wife, in any area of life, you have to learn the skills of success. And so many authors today, we don't have anywhere to go to learn, right? There's no school out there to be an author, right? You can study writing skills in English in college, but it's not gonna teach you the fundamental skills of success as an author. And so that's my goal here at Evo Publishing School is to teach you that. Now, I know a lot of people say knowledge is power, and it's true, knowledge is incredibly powerful, but knowledge alone is not what you need for success. You need actually knowledge in action. Knowledge in action is real power. And so what I'm going to do in this video course is also challenge you not only to learn the skills and ideas and concepts that you need to master to be successful, but I'm actually challenge you to implement them right away in your business. So what I want you to do when you're watching these videos, take good notes and follow along in the tutorials. Now remember, these videos are free and you can come back to them at any time. So if you're not quite ready to publish your book on Kindle yet, you can always come back to that video later. And when you're ready, it'll be there for you to help you get the job done right. All right, with that, let's get started. I'm gonna show you right now how to format your ebook for Kindle using Microsoft Word. Now, I've made sure to provide a free ebook formatting template for Microsoft Word for both fiction and nonfiction authors. So whether you're writing a novel or a nonfiction book, uh, right underneath this video, you can click and immediately download uh, your copy of this free formatting template as my gift to you. Okay, now before you do anything at all with your manuscript, you want to select all the text in the manuscript. So I'm gonna hit Control A to select every single bit of text in my entire manuscript. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to 
come to the headings and I'm going to put the normal heading right there, the normal heading. And what that's going to do is going to remove any stray formatting. Now, if you've copied and pasted text from other places, uh, if you have any kind of weird fonts or weird characters, what you're going to want to do is actually copy and paste your entire manuscript into a text document to clear the formatting. You can use a .txt document on a PC. Uh, if you're on a Mac or a different computer, you can also just go to editpad.org. And when you go to editpad.org, this is what it looks like at editpad.org. You're then going to just copy and paste your text into here. Now, once you've copied and pasted your entire text in here, what you're going to do is reselect it, copy it again, and then paste it back into the Word document. And then once you've done that, what it's going to do is going to clear all the formatting, every single bit of formatting in your book is totally going to clear it. So no HTML, no code, no links, no bold, no italics. It's going to clear all that stuff from the manuscript. And it's also going to clear any stray characters or formatting errors you might have had. And this is really common. A lot of people have formatting errors because they copied and pasted text from different bits of websites and Evernote and Scrivener and somewhere here and somewhere there. And so you have all these jumbled fonts and different characters from different programs and it can really mess up your formatting. So it's really important that you clear your formatting uh, before you format your book to avoid any mistakes. Now, you don't have to do this, but if you do format your book and notice there's weird mistakes and weird things going on everywhere, uh, the, basically the easiest way to fix that is to copy and paste your entire manuscript into editpad.org, copy and paste that back into Microsoft Word, and that will clear all the formatting for you. So the first thing you're gonna do after you've done that is go up to style set, change styles, then select style set, and then select simple right here. And what that's going to do, the style set basically tells Microsoft Word um, what kind of fonts you want to use for your different headings, for your uh, body paragraphs, um, for your heading ones, your chapter titles, all that stuff. So simple style set is the one I use. It's the easiest, most straightforward, and it's going to work the best uh, when you're formatting your ebook for Kindle. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do after we selected a style set is come here and work on our title page. So on the title page, you can have your title right up here at the top of the book. You're going to come up here to the headings tab, hit that arrow, drop down arrow right there, select title, and that's going to format this text right here to look like the title of your book. Now the only thing you have to do after that is come up here and align the paragraph centered so it's centered and looks really nice. Next, we have the author name and a subtitle here. We're going to come up here and click subtitle in the headings so you get that subtitle font going on here. And then again, we're going to align it center so it looks nice and good on that title page. All right, next we have the copyright section here and we have our call to action. So the call to action and title page are also going to be um, centered, but they're going to be normal font and they're going to be centered just like that. Uh, once we have that, I usually bold this section here, but you don't have to. Uh, and then I would also bold this section here. And I'm also going to insert a link here to ebookpublishingschool.com. Now, this is where I put the call to action. The call to action is essentially asking your readers, your fans, your customers to come join your newsletter, to check out your blog, to sign up for your free training course, your free ebook, whatever uh, offer you have for your audience to get people to connect with you online. So it's a great non-intrusive way to build your audience and build your platform inside your manuscript. It's right at the beginning there. It's not in the middle of a chapter that's going to interrupt people, um, but it's just really nice and convenient for people to see it right there uh, on the very front title page of your book. So to insert a link, we're going to select the text here we want to insert a link on, and then come up here to the top, Insert, and then Hyperlink, and then we're going to have the address right here, which is going to be HTTP colon slash slash www.ebookpublishing.com school.com. Once you make sure the address is correct, hit OK, and there you'll see the blue hyperlink right there. And it's super important that you always test uh, these hyperlinks in your manuscript. You need to test every single link in your document because if you've got a link out um, that's going to really pick off readers and you're going to miss that opportunity to connect with your readers. So make sure you check every single link in your manuscript before you upload your book to Kindle. If you already uploaded your book to Kindle and you find there's a mistake, you can go back to kdp.com, you know, watch that 
next video where I show you how to actually upload your book uh, and you can actually go ahead and change that. So in the next video, I'll share with you exactly how um, you upload your book and publish it on Kindle. And it's also the same exact process you would use um, to upload a new manuscript if you make uh, if you find mistakes and fix them or if you do a second edition of your book. Okay, there we're done with the title page. So what we're going to do here is insert a page break. So come up to the insert tab again and then click page break. And right there we will have a page break. Now one important point here, a super important thing you want to do is go to the home page right up here at the top and come to this little button right here. It's called the show slash hide pilcrow button. Now a pilcrow are these little uh, signs right here that mean it's the end of a paragraph. And you want to use this show hide pilcrows uh, because it's going to help you see symbols like page break, see where you have enter signs here, um, see if you have extra spaces like that. It will look like a little dot. Um, so it just helps you uh, see the formatting hidden characters in your manuscript that, that you don't see with the naked eye, but are actually there and will show up and affect how your document looks in the Kindle device. Okay, so once we've got the page break done there, next we have the uh, introduction, the foreword here, which is called, I call it I, why I wrote this book. And this is going to be our first chapter heading. So for, we're going to use heading one for chapters and heading two for subheadings in your chapters. So this is like a chapter of the book, so it's going to have heading one there. And then this is just the paragraph text in here, and it's going to be normal font. And then this is the end of a page. So what I'm going to do is delete this extra character here, and then I'm going to insert page break, and that's the end of that page there. So after at the end of every single chapter, or every single important page, like the title page, you're going to have a page break at the end of that page. And what this is going to do is it's going to end that page on the Kindle device. So the reader will only see this text here and will not see the next chapter until they click the next button and scroll to the next page on their Kindle device or iPad. Okay, next chapter, we're gonna have a new chapter heading here again. So heading one, and we have an extra pilker here. You see that? It's really important. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that pilker right there. Now, it doesn't matter if you actually have a space uh, at the top there you can do whatever you think looks best. The important thing is to have it be uniform. So if you want extra space at the beginning of every chapter, uh, you can use the pilcro, extra pilcro there to do that. Another way to create that extra space there is to actually change and modify how you want your headings to look. So we can actually select this text right here, right click it, go to paragraph, edit the paragraph settings, and we can change the spacing before. We can change the spacing and make it bigger. So we can double the spacing before and we can create 24 points of spacing after uh, that space as well. And if we do that, what you'll notice is there's extra space here now, right? But there's no space uh, now uh, at the top because there's nothing above this, right? This is the first characters on this page because we have a page break back there. So if you wanted to create that extra space in there, you would need another pillow row right there. You can also center your title headings. Some people think it looks really nice. Some people don't like to do that. But if you would like to center your title headings, uh, either way, left justified is centered. Either one works just fine. It's up to you. But to center it, we would just go right there. And then once we've customized the heading to make sure it looks good, we can then just use one button to make this translate across the entire document. And what we're doing is basically creating our custom style and telling uh, Microsoft Word, hey, we want every single heading one in this book to look just like the one I just created. So in order to do that, again, just highlight the text, come here to heading one, right click it, and then click update heading one to match selection. And what that does is every single time there's a heading one in your book now, it's going to match exactly the characteristics of these font and this font and this paragraph settings that you just created. Next here we have a more text. So again, all our plain text in the book is just gonna be the normal font. And that's the end of that page there. So we're going to go ahead and insert another page break. All right, we're making progress here. You guys excited? So next we're gonna have the table of contents here. And for the table of contents, I'm gonna use a heading two because uh, anything you have in a heading one will appear in the table of contents when you create it. Now you can customize it later, um, but just to keep things simple, I'm gonna use a heading two for the table of contents. And again, if you want that to be centered, you can go ahead and center it. If you want to add more space, you're going right -click, to right click it, hit paragraph. We can go ahead and add more space after and before the paragraph. Go ahead and hit OK, and then update heading two to match selection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this 
after I've created the rest of the document because you can't actually create a clickable table of contents until you've done the rest of your document. So we're actually going to come back to this section at the end. Okay, next we have chapter one here. Again, where that's going to be a heading, heading one. We have an extra space there, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it and make it heading one just like before so that the same uh, size uh, spacing here matches the spacing here. So it doesn't matter how you do this. If you delete this extra spaces here, that's fine. So for this document, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete them. But if you want those spaces there, just make sure that's really uniform so it looks the same on every page. Next, we have the chapter text. Again, normal setting. Here we have a subheading one. So subheading one, we're going to use heading two to have that subheading right there. Again, more chapter text here. Hit normal. Uh, so another sub subheading, that's going to be a heading three for us. And we're going to go ahead and center that and then update heading three to match that selection. Here's a subheading two. Here is sub subheading again. Okay, we've made progress again. We're going to the next page. So another page break there. And that's, this is gonna be what the, the text in subheadings are gonna look like in your book. So we're gonna have the introduction, the heading, chapter heading right here, normal font, a subheading, more text, a sub subheading under that subheading, then we're gonna have a new subheading, a new main subheading, and then we're gonna have more text and then a sub subheading under that again, and that's the end of the paragraph. Now, of course, you can customize this. Your, your chapters might not actually look like this, but that's how you would actually uh, format these different characteristics of your book. So if you wanted a subheading, you'd use heading two. If you wanted a smaller subheading underneath that, you could use subheading three. And again, you can change this. You can change it from italics to non-italics and then update the heading to match the selection. Uh, it's really up to you how you want it to look, um, but if you just use the standard settings in Microsoft Word in the simple, simple style set, uh, it'll work just fine for you. You don't have to customize it if you don't want to. Next, chapter two, again, heading one. Again, subheadings, making them heading two, sub subheadings, heading three, subheading is two, and sub subheading is three, and then again, inserting the page break. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and follow the same process throughout the rest of the book here. Keep rinse and repeat. So, heading one, new chapter, heading one, the new end of chapter, page break, new chapter, heading one. Subheadings. And you can see how fast and easy it can be to go through once you've done this a couple times. It'll just be second nature to you. Okay, what I'm gonna do for the sake of this training video to make it shorter is just go ahead and delete the rest of the chapters here. So I don't have to go through those, uh, but I think you get the point. Okay, so after the last final chapter of your book, you're gonna have the end material in your book. And the first thing you're gonna have there is this about the author section. So again, we're gonna have heading one for that. We've got extra spaces in here. So you can see now with the show hide pilcro button up there, you can see we've got this extra space here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that space. Now, if you wanted uh, to, you can also include an author picture in there. And that's where I would include that author picture is right here. And what you would do is go ahead and click insert, then hit picture, and then just find a picture that you want to insert in the book. And that would be your author bio. Once you've inserted, it's gonna look, uh, you're gonna see a picture right there and just leave the picture. You don't have to do anything. Don't center it, don't move it around. Uh, you don't have to change the size, just let it be and it should look just fine. Now, if you do notice the picture is too big, it's too small, it's kind of grainy, you can always come back and change it later. And you can use the Kindle Previewer, which I'll show you how to do in the next video, in order to make sure it looks just perfect before you publish it on Kindle. So you don't actually have to publish it and then find a mistake and go back and fix it. You can find these mistakes before you publish your book using the Kindle Previewer. And again, I'll show you that in video two at eBook Publishing School. So here I'm just gonna delete the extra space because I'm not gonna use a photo in this video. Next, we're gonna insert a page break at the end of this page. Here we have some links. So again, what we're gonna do is go up to hyperlink, insert, and again, type in the hyperlink. We'll just pretend that's the right link. And the, the HTTP colon and two slashes. 
um, in Microsoft Word because if you don't, the link might not work properly. And if you don't want the HTTP text to actually show up in your book, what you can do is just go ahead and highlight that text and delete it. Next, we have the next page, other books by the author. So we're gonna go ahead and have heading one for that. Then we're gonna have your books here. And what you then wanna do is insert the link, just like before, insert a hyperlink to the actual page on Amazon where people can buy your book. So it makes it super easy, super fast, super convenient for your customers. Just go ahead and click that link and buy your next book inside your current book. This is a huge way you can use to increase your sales uh, automatically. It's totally free for you. It just makes it super easy and convenient for readers to buy your next book. So it's really important you take the time to do that. Once you have multiple books published, go ahead and have this section in your book called Other Books by, and then your author name, and then put the links here to the books to make it super easy and convenient for your customers to find your books. Okay, and this is the end of that page here. And again, we're gonna insert a page break. Next, we have uh, this one last thing, and I'm gonna make this a heading two to avoid being indexed in the table of contents. Because remember, anything with a heading one is gonna go in the table of contents here while coming up. And then this is just the request that says, hey, you know, if you like this book, if you love the book, please leave me a review on Amazon. It's just a simple, plain review request where you write a personal letter to your readers, ask them to review your book. It's a great way to get more reviews doesn't cost you anything. Now, one thing to be aware of you should really watch out for here is you cannot offer a gift in return for a review. It's a violation of Amazon's terms of service. And I've seen some marketers out there say, you know, you know, offer people a free video or a free report or a free bonus if they review your book. You can't do that. Uh, it's against their terms of service. And if they find out you are doing that, they can actually remove your book from the store. Uh, they can, you can lose all the reviews for your book. And, and in extreme cases, you can even have your entire account banned from Amazon. You do not want that to happen. So again, you cannot give any gifts in return for review. All you can do is say, hey, if you honestly like this book, please leave me an honest review. You know, just say, please leave me an honest review. You can't give them anything in return. You can give out review copies. So, you know, you can give out a free PDF copy or a free Mobi copy or free EPUB copy of your book to reviewers. Um, that's acceptable in terms of service, but any other gifts are not allowed. Okay, and then what I normally do is I will actually go on Amazon once the book is published, after it's been published, and I will insert a link here um, to the exact page on Amazon where people can review your book. And I would go ahead and insert the hyperlink right here. Okay, now that's it. Once you've had this, finish this letter, that entire book now has been formatted for Kindle. The only final thing we have to do now is update the table of contents. So that's right here. So here's what we do. I'm gonna delete all this text in here because we don't need it. So you, and then I'm gonna insert that page break again because I got deleted on accident. So here we have the table of contents page and I'm gonna create an a hit enter here to hit a pilk row. So there should be some space in here to, to put your table of contents in. Once you have that, come up to references table of contents, and then insert table of contents here. And then you're gonna have some important options here you need to select. So first of all, you're gonna deselect page numbers. You do not want page numbers to show up in your table of contents because page numbers do not technically exist for eBooks. They use something uh, totally different, uh, basically the lines, they measure the lines uh, in the eBook because every eBook reader, every iPhone, every iPad has a different size on it and people can select different fonts and things. So it changes the pace of how many words are on each page. So there's no such thing as a page for an ebook. So deselect show page numbers. You do not want that to show up in your table of contents. We're gonna make sure we have this clicked here. It says use hyperlinks instead of page numbers. We want hyperlinks in this table of contents because the hyperlinks are the actual links that make it so that when someone clicks the table of contents in your book on Amazon, they can actually go directly to that chapter in your book. The device takes them there automatically. We're gonna use the from template format here. And again, delete the page numbers. No page numbers. And then show levels here, we're gonna hit one. So if we have level three here, we're gonna have all of our subheadings and sub subheadings appear in the table of contents. Now, if you want that for a technical book, you can do that. Uh, but I find it tends to clutter up the manuscript quite, quite a bit too much. So I like to have only heading ones, only the major chapter titles uh, and major sections of the book appear here in the table of contents. Once you're done, click OK. And here you have your automatic table of contents 
selected right here. Okay, now once you've done that, this table of contents is now working. In order to actually click it though, you're gonna have to hit the control button and then click it. And when you click it, it'll take you to the link right there in that book, right there to the exact section you want to. So if you wanna to go to chapter five, I just control and then click chapter five and it takes me right there automatically. And so if all those links are working inside Microsoft Word, they'll also be working on Kindle for you. So it's a super easy, super fast way to create a table of contents. No mess, no stress, no fuss. It's super easy. Uh, again, go to references, insert table of contents. No page numbers, always use hyperlinks instead of page numbers. Show levels one, hit okay, and you're good. Okay, now one more point I wanna make about this uh, formatting manuscript is you can change things. So um, you can change, again, how big you want the title here, um, how big you want your subtitle, whether you want it centered or aligned left. Um, you can make little changes like that to the formatting of your manuscript. Um, but there are certain things that don't really matter. So the font type, whatever font type you choose doesn't really matter because 99% of readers are gonna choose their own custom font type on their own device. So on every smartphone and every Kindle device, and even on iPads, on the Kindle apps, you can change and select, every reader can change and select what kind of font they wanna use and what size font they wanna use. And that way, you know, if someone's got vision problems, they can actually enlarge the text and they can see really large text on their screen and they can read it easily. So uh, it's all customizable now by the reader, not the author. So if you do have a custom font you want, like a really fancy, nice font you want, you know, it's fine, you can use that. Um, it's very unlikely that the customers will actually ever use that font or ever see that font though. So uh, generally speaking, I would just follow, again, the simple style set here. Always use a simple style set and then the normal font size. And that'll be Cambria heading 11 and it works just, just fine. So you do not need to customize that stuff. You can customize it, but you really don't need to. Okay, now what I've showed you so far works absolutely perfectly and is all you need to know if you are formatting a nonfiction ebook for Kindle. If you are a fiction author, there's one little thing, one little quick change I'm gonna show you how to make that's really, really important to make your fiction book look really, really good. And I also have a separate template, a separate formatting template for fiction ebooks. Again, that's also available below this video. And that already has with it all the changes included that I'm about to show you how to make right now. So basically, one simple change you're gonna make for fiction books is you're gonna come here to your chapter text. You're gonna select the chapter text, which is the normal font here. And we're gonna change a few of the settings on the chapter text. So what we're gonna do is take the, highlight the paragraph, right click it, then click paragraph, and we're gonna change the settings here. So you see where it says indentation special here? We're gonna hit first line, and we're gonna type in 0 0.38 inches. And that's gonna be the indentation there. And then we're also gonna remove all the spacing after the paragraph. So after paragraphs, there's going to be zero space between the paragraphs. And what this is going to do, if you type in chapter text, it is going to make your book look like a novel should look like. So uh, if you've read novels, read a lot of novels, you'll notice a lot of times, they always have an indentation here at the side. And then if the paragraph goes long, it goes all the way to the left margin, uh, but the beginning of all paragraphs are always indented and there's no space between paragraphs. And that's exactly how you would want your novels and fiction text to look in an ebook device and any e-reader and all as well in a uh, professionally published paperback book. So that's the only change you have to make for a fiction ebook. Now what you need to do, again, remember, once you've made this change, highlight the text, come to normal and hit update normal to match selection. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna change every single font in your book to have those paragraph dimensions we just mentioned, which are first line indented by 0.38 inches and no spacing after the paragraph. Uh, now the normal style type here, uh, the normal heading type is what bases all the other heading types as well. So what's gonna happen, you'll notice here, if you were paying attention to the video, uh, as soon as I updated the normal text to match um, this new setting, it also changed the chapter one headings. So if you come to paragraph here in chapter one, you'll notice that the first line is now indented. We don't want that to be indented now for the headings because it's gonna make them off-center. You don't want an indentation and center. It's gonna make them a little bit off-center. It's gonna look a little funky. So uh, we're gonna change that back to none. 
and then we're going to update heading one to match selection. And you can also have to do that with any other headings you have. So if you've got subheadings in your book that uh, were changed, you'll notice all the subheadings are a little bit off-center as well. So we're going to change the subheading, no indentation, hit OK, update to match selection. And we're going to do that same thing again here for heading three. Again, no indentation on the first line for the headings. Update heading three to match selection. And you'll also notice any other font you have you did not want to be indented is now going to be indented, like the title page as well. So on this title page, we're going to come here. We're going to edit the paragraph settings. We're going to do no indentations there. And we're going to align everything center aligned. And then it's going to look back again like it did before. Um, you might also notice that there's no spacing now between paragraphs here. Um, because again, that was also a setting we changed earlier. So you can just add spacing here if you'd like, or instead you can just add pill crows in between. It's really up to you. There's no right or wrong way to do it. So once you have the spacing looking as you want it, and the, every part of your manuscript is now centered, uh, the heading is now centered, and the main text is now uh, justified and indented as you'd like it to be, just what you're going to do, just check over your entire manuscript again to see if there's any other changes you want. So again, here, this is another area where you probably wouldn't want that kind of formatting. So you might want to just go ahead and delete that indentation there, add some spacing after, and that section looks very nice now. Uh, again, the author bio, you might want to also change that. So I'm going to remove that indentation. We're going to add more spacing after the paragraphs, and that's going to look there more professional. And so that's the only change you really need to make for a fiction ebook. And again, we also have the free fiction formatting template as well, which already has those changes made in there for you. Uh, once you're done, just go ahead and save your manuscript. You're going to go to file, you're going to hit save as, and you're going to save it as a Word document. You can do uh, an older template. Um, in the newer versions, you can do a newer template. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Just save it as any standard Word document. And when you upload it to Kindle, which I'll show you how to do in the next video, it will work just fine and Kindle will convert it for you into the proper formatting. All right, so that's it. Uh, it was a really fast video. You can tell it doesn't take a lot of time to format your book for Kindle if you know what you're doing. Um, so if you didn't get everything in the first try, go ahead and you can rewind this video, watch it again, and actually go through it step by step. Um, but it's a super simple, super easy process to format your ebook for Kindle. You don't need complicated software, expensive software. Uh, there are certainly other ways to do it, but this is uh, generally the fastest, the cheapest, the easiest way to do it for most authors. And uh, it works really good, it looks really professional. I hope this video has been so helpful for you already, and I'm just so excited for you to continue on your journey to becoming a best-selling author. Now, if you have any questions, any problems, any struggles at all, post them in the comments below here at ebook publishing school and i promise i will read all the comments and i will do my best to answer all your questions and concerns and get you on the right track also i'm holding a special contest in 2015 here at ebook publishing school here's how it's going to work i want you to post a comment below this video at ebook publishing school and i want you to share with us what is your mission? What is your purpose? What drives you to want to become a best-selling author to get your message and story out in the world? We want to hear your purpose. What is your mission statement? Why are you so passionate about this journey that you're on? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick every single month at the end of the month, I'm going to pick my favorite comment, my favorite quote, my favorite story that you shared here. And I will send you totally free a signed copy of my book, Secrets of the Six Figure Author, to really help you get on the right track and continue your journey, achieving your goals and fulfilling your mission. Okay, so make sure to post your comment below this video for your chance to win a free copy of the book. And I'll see you in the next video where we're going to show you how to publish and upload your book to Amazon Kindle.